The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston. No, Jack... no, Don, hold it, for heaven's sake. Remember our new product. Oh, yes. The Grapes Nuts Flakes program. <laughs> that starring... Grape Nuts Flakes, great. The Grape Nuts oh, Flakes I'll program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis A. Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson, coming to you from the Army Air Base at Santa Ana, California. friends, did this ever happen to you? You dash out of bed, stub your toe on the alarm clock, nick your face while you're shaving, get the shirt missing a button, clump downstairs wearing your before breakfast blitzkrieg look, and right there on the table sits a great big tempting bowl full of grape nuts flakes. And what happens now? Well, you sample that outstanding grape nuts flakes flavor. It's your same favorite grape nuts flavor in toasty brown flake form, malty rich and sweet as a nut. So you look at your wife and you actually beam, for there's plenty of satisfaction in that grand goodness, the flavor that's made Grape Nuts Flakes America's fastest growing cereal. That's because Grape Nuts Flakes are made in a different way. They're a blend of two luscious grains, sun-ripened wheat and malted barley, toasted golden brown and crisp and delicate tempting flakes. So for smooth tasting, smooth tempered breakfast that baby your budget, ask for delicious thrifty Grape Nuts Flakes in the big 12 ounce package. March played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since we're at the Army Air Base at Santa Ana, we would like to reenact a scene which took place last Thursday when two cadets from this very field paid a visit to Jack Benny at his home in Beverly Hills. Oh, Don, who wants to hear about that? Jack and Rochester were hard at work in the kitchen, as I understand it, little suspecting that anyone would drop in. <laughs> oh, boy, that sure smells good. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. As I go riding, see what else? Tomatoes, vinegar, onions. Oh, Rochester, did you cut up those onions like I told you to? Rochester, did you cut up those onions? <laughs> I'm, I'm cutting them up now, boss. <laughs> oh, pull yourself together. How many onions you got there? About five, boss. Do you want any more? <laughs> yes, get busy. And stop crying. Uh, I can't help it, boss. <laughs> Look, Rochester, if the onions make you cry while you're chopping them up, don't stand so close to them. Close to them? I'm using a hole now. <laughs> All right, I'll do the onion. And you get these jars ready. Have you got the labels? Here they are. Mother Benny's old-fashioned homemade chili sauce. <laughs> hey, they're pretty fancy, aren't they? Yeah, and I like our new slogan. Our chili is hot on rump roaster pot. <laughs> yeah, that ought to get us plenty of customers. Well, I might as well finish these onions myself. Mmm, this sauce don't look just right. You know, boss, I don't think we got enough tomatoes in here. I said I don't think we got enough tomatoes in here. Shall I put some more tomatoes in, Mr. Benny? <laughs> There's plenty of tomatoes in there. <laughs> All the recipe calls for. <laughs> well, the onions are ready. Dump them in, Rochester. Okay. I want to get all this stuff cooked and bottled before Miss Livingston gets here. I promise to take her shopping. It's only 10.30, boss. 10.30? Oh, my goodness. Tune in the radio, Rochester. Tune it in. What's the matter? It's time for that pro program. Tune in the radio. Oh, yes. Yes! Sally Sutton! I don't want to miss today's episode. Here's the station, boss. Thank heaven. And so, chin up, but with tears in the eyes, <laughs> Sally Sutton has given up hope of a reconciliation with her husband, Paul, and decided on the most drastic of all steps, a divorce. Now her, her husband has been playing around, Rochester. That's all, that's all she can do. Hasn't she got a razor? No. <laughs> Listen, 
As we fade in on the Sutton Cottage, a cottage that was once a happy American home, we find Sally in conference with her friend and advisor, old Judge Hooper. Sally is speaking. I, I can't go on, Judge Hooper. I can't go on like this. It's too much. There, there now, Sally. <laughs> My life. Yes, Sally, honey. And I have to admire the way you've gone through all this. <laughs> Sin up, but with tear dimmed eyes. <laughs> you said it. Tell me, old Judge Hooper, what shall I do about Paul? Uh, you might as well face it, Sally, honey. Paul's a drinking man. And if when there's one thing I can't stand, it's a, <laughs> a drinking <laughs> man. <laughs> Well, what's that? I think the old judge is loaded. <laughs> oh, he couldn't be. And your advice, Judge? You just got to get a divorce, Sally, honey. Open up, open up, quick. Oh, my goodness. Sally's house is on fire. That's us, boss. The chili sauce just boiled over. <laughs> well, shut off the gas and stir it. Come in. Why, it's old Doc Thompson. Hello, Sally. Hello, old Judge Hooper. Hello, old Doc, honey. <laughs> he calls everybody honey. I've got bad news for you, Sally. It's about your husband, Paul. Paul? What about Paul? The emergency hospital called just now and told me... Yes? ...that your husband... Yes, yes? ...that your husband, Paul... Yes, yes, yes? <laughs> there goes that gold darn radio again. <laughs> Quick, Rochester, fix it! Fix it? Yeah, hit it, kick it, shake it! That's the way you're fixing the lawn, club! Oh, wait a minute, let me do it! Of all times for this thing to go haywire, I want to know what happened to Paul! Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. You ready to take me shopping? I can't take you now, Mary. Paul's in the emergency hospital. Paul Whiteman? No, no, Paul Sutton. The darn radio went on the blink. Right in the middle of the heartaches of Sally Sutton. Fix it, boss! <laughs> there, good. Good, it's working again. Quiet now. Quiet, Rochester. And so, don't forget to tune in tomorrow morning <laughs> for another installment in the heartaches of Sally Sutton. Well, I'll be... Till then, this is Truman Clapsaddle. <laughs> Saying au revoir. Wait a minute, what happened to Paul? Oh, shut up! <laughs> well, I'll just have to wait until tomorrow morning, I guess. Let's get back to our canning, Rochester. What is that stuff, Jack? Homemade chili sauce. Come on, Rochester, let's start pouring it in the bottles. You hold the funnel. Oh, fine. Chili sauce and bromo seltzer bottles. Well, I had a lot of them around. You know how I worry. <laughs> Now, come on, Rochester, let's get this stuff all bottled. I got spurs that jingle jangle jingle. I got spurs that jingle jangle As I go riding merrily along. As I go riding merrily And they sing, oh, ain't you glad you sing. Oh, ain't you glad you sing. And that song ain't so And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us continue with our story of what happened when the two cadets from Santa Ana visited Jack's home. As you remember, Jack, Mary, and Rochester were bottling chili sauce in the kitchen. As I go riding merrily... There, that's that. Now, how many bottles did we get out of this batch, Rochester? Three dozen, not counting the two that blew up. <laughs> blew up? I didn't hear any of them blow up. Look for yourself, boss. That ain't a sunset on the ceiling. <laughs> Well, wipe it off. Come on, Mary, I'll take you shopping. The car's out in the driveway. Okay. And incidentally, Mary, this'll be your last ride in the Maxwell. I'm turning it in next week to the junk salvage drive. Do you think they'll take it? Yes. 
Come on, grab a few of these bottles. I got a rush order from the farmer's market. I am not walking through Beverly Hills with my arms full of chili sauce. Oh, all right, I'll take it. There. Uh oh, here comes that crazy boy of ours, boss. He's not crazy. Well, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Hello, Mr. Benny. Taking some of your blood to the Red Cross, I think. <laughs> No, 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 Mr. Billingsley. Uh, this is chili sauce. By the way, would you like to go to the farmer's market with us? No, thank you. I must go out to my laboratory and work on my new parachute idea. Uh, what's that? I'm putting rip cords on mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms for rip cords? For parachutes? <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> My goodness, isn't that dangerous? Oh, yes. You might get a toadstool. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Why, Job, you certainly are. <laughs> hmm. Now it's now it's parachute. That Mr. Billingsley certainly is a genius when it comes to inventing things. Oh, yeah. How about that wristwatch he made for me? What's the matter with that watch? Every time I go to wind it, the hands get fresh with me. <laughs> oh, stop dreaming things up, will you? See who's at the door, Rochester. Okay, Mother Benny. That's only for the label. Now, see who's at the door. Okay. That Rochester is so lazy today. Well, naturally, it's Thursday, a day off. Not <laughs> Not so loud. I didn't tear Wednesday off the calendar. <laughs> well, look who's here, Phil Harris. And he's got his baby with him. Hello, Phil. Hello, Jackson, Mary. You know, I had the kid out for a ride on my motorcycle, so I thought I'd drop in. What? You brought a five-month-old baby all the way from Encino on a motorcycle? We only made one stop, Jackson. Changed oil and diapers. <laughs> hmm, that kid's probably scared to death. Ah, Jackson, she loved it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a baby, always laughing Yeah, you know, Phil, I think she's going to have curly hair just like you Sure, them things are liable to be hereditary <laughs> Hereditary? He means it runs in the family, Lily <laughs> I know what he means <laughs> Oh, there she goes giggling again Oh, let me hold the baby, Phil No, no, Mary, just let her sit on the table here and play with these bottles Careful now, darling. <laughs> Careful now, sweetheart. <laughs> Make a note of that, Rochester. One bottle of chili sauce to Mr. Harris, 15 cents. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Wait a minute now. I ain't responsible for nothing my kid does. This baby's a minor. I don't care. She's John L. Lewis. You're paying for that <laughs> Come on, fork over. Uh oh. Now see what you did. You made the baby cry. Now, now, baby. Here's another bottle of chili sauce to play with. Your daddy can afford it. Here, here, take the bottle. There now. Look out, Jack. Duck. Ooh. Ooh. Holy smoke, she knocked him out. Quick, Rochester, get some water. Mr. Benny's unconscious. Let him lay there. He ain't been getting much sleep lately. <laughs> Jack, Jack, speak to me. Oh, where am I? Sorry, Jackson, but my baby conked you with a bottle. Did the bottle break? Absolutely not. No sale, Jack. <laughs> oh, my head. Listen, Phil, it's all right for you and your baby to come over and pay me a friendly visit. But when that kid of yours deliberately picks up a bottle of Mother Benny's old-fashioned homemade chili sauce and cocks her old Uncle Jack on the head with it, that's going to be... I got a gal in Kalamazoo I don't want to boast, but I know she's the toast of Kalamazoo zoo, 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 zoo. Years have gone by, my, 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 how she grew But I liked her looks when I carried her books in Kalamazoo zoo, 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 zoo. I'm on the send the wire, hopping on a flyer, leaving today Am I dreaming? I can hear screaming. Hiya, Mr. Jackson. Everything's okay. A L A M A C O. What a gal. She's something to rule. 
I'll make my bid for that freckle-faced kid I'm hurrying to. I'm going to Michigan to see the sweetest gal in Kalamazoo. Send a wire, hopping on a flyer, leaving today. Am I dreaming? I can hear screaming. Hiya, Jackson. Everything's okay. A L A M A Z O O. What a gal. She's some to Peru. I'll make my bid for that freckle faced kid I'm hurrying to. I'm going to Michigan to see the sweetest gal in Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo! It was I Got a Gal in Kalamazoo, played by Phil Harris in the orchestra. And speaking of Kalamazoo, ladies, whether you're a gal in Kalamazoo or Kankakoo, Oh, Brother Roo. Why not serve your husband a bang-up breakfast treat? Just try him on Grape Nuts Flakes. There you go again. Don, that's great, great. And now, let us continue with our story of what happened when the two cadets from Santa Ana visited Jack in Beverly Hills. As we left Jack, he had been knocked cold by a tap from a tiny pot. Hmm. Look at that lump on my head. I'm glad Phil took the baby home. Believe me, the next time that kid starts after me, I'm going to be set. I'm going to be ready. Oh, put your fist down, killer. <laughs> well, I'm mad. Come on, let's take these bottles over to the market. You take the bottles out, Rochester. I'll answer the door. Coming, coming. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Oh, my head. As I go riding... Well, 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 a couple of soldiers. Hello, fellas. Hello. Say, we're cadets from Santa Ana, and we're visiting the movie stars' homes. <laughs> you, uh, you are? Yeah. Can you tell us where Miss Barbara Stanwyck lives? Barbara Stanwyck? Uh-huh. Yes, yes, she lives about four blocks down the street. But as uh, long as you're visiting some of the big movie stars... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this, uh, this happens to be Jack Benny's house. I'm Benny. Oh, is your son at home? <laughs> no, look, I'm, I'm Jack Benny, me. Jello again. I mean, great nuts place again. This is Jack Benny. <laughs> uh, come on, uh, come on in, boys. Uh, say, uh, what do you got that dress on for? Oh, oh, this is an apron. I've been making chili sauce. Come on in. Oh, well, thanks just the same, but we're especially anxious to meet Barbara Stanwyck. Oh, yes, yes. Babs. Uh, she's a swell girl. Babs? Who's Babs? That's, uh, <laughs> that's Barbara Stanwyck, you see. All her close friends call her Babs. I'll tell you what, fellas, it's only a short way. I'll walk you over there. Come on, Jack. Let's go shopping. Oh, Mary, come here a minute. I want you fellas to meet Mary Livingston. She's a stooge on my program. What was that? Don't sneak up on me. <laughs> The, the Mary, uh, these, these boys are cadets from Santa Ana. Oh, hello, fellas. Gee, Mary Livingston. Wow, a woman. <laughs> I didn't know we had so many people in our front yard. Out there. <laughs> Say, Mary... Uh, Mary, I promised to take the boys over to Bab's house. Uh, would you like to come along? Who's Bab? Bab Stanwyck, Barbara. Come on, come on, fellas, let's go. Well... Well, here we are. I hope Babs is home. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Are you excited, boys? Oh, we sure are. Good afternoon. 
Uh, I'm uh, Jack Benny. Uh, these two cadets would like to meet Miss Stanwyck. Come on, fellas, let's go in. Uh, just a moment, please. Miss Stanwyck is taking a bath. Oh. Oh, then I'll wait. You certainly will. <laughs> Hey, you'll, uh, you'll love Bad Fella. She's my favorite, too. Who's that at the door down there? Uh, down there is the butler's name. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, uh, Jack Benny. Hello, Barbara. Oh, hello, Jack. people in her house, too. <laughs> Say, Barbara, Barbara, can you come down a minute? I've got something I want to see you about. Jack, I told you yesterday, I've got enough chili sauce to last me six years. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not about chili sauce. I got a couple of cadets from Santa Ana with me. They want to meet you. Oh, then I'll be right down. Uh, won't you step in and wait, folks? Uh, thank you. By Jove, you certainly are. <laughs> Must be a friend of Mr. Billingsley's. Hmm? Oh, oh, here's Barbara now. Hello, Mary. How are you, fellas? Hello, Barbara. Mm, gee, glad to meet you, Miss Stanwyck. We've sure been looking forward to this. <laughs> Hiya, Barbara. Good heavens, Jack. What are you doing in that apron? Oh, uh, Mary, why didn't you remind me to take off this apron? I didn't know if you had any pants on. <laughs> I've got pants on, but you can't see them. That Rochester got so patriotic, he cut my cuffs away up to the knees. <laughs> Sit down, fellas. Yes, please do. You know, the boys were over at my house, but they were a little impatient. They uh, were just dying to meet Babs. Babs? Who's that? <laughs> <coughs> you, you, all your close friends call you Babs. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> hmm. Oh, by the way, would you boys care for a sandwich or something? Oh, no, thank you, Miss Stanwyck. Just looking at you is enough. Well, how about your buddy? Would you like a sandwich? I'm looking at Miss Livingston. <laughs> well, say, uh, I'm, uh, I'm hungry, Barbara. I can stand a sandwich. Well, why don't you go out in the kitchen and make one? You're all dressed for it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> well, never mind. I'll just have some of these walnuts here. May I? Go right ahead if I'm not too late. <laughs> Thanks. So you boys are cadets from Santa Ana, huh? Mm -hmm. My name is Bill Orr, and I'm going to be a bombardier. My buddy here, Peter Hayes, is he's studying to be a navigator. Well, that's wonderful. A bombardier and a navigator. I'd like to be a pilot. That's for me. <laughs> Oh, gee, these nuts are good. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Jack. Well, how many did I eat? I don't mean that. I mean that the bombardier and the navigator are just as important as the pilot. Their jobs are equally as interesting and require just as much training. <laughs> all right, all right. I can't be a... I can't be a pilot anyway. I'm over 26. <laughs> or, did they, uh, or did they raise the age limit to 36? Till they put wings on rocking chairs, you don't have to worry. <laughs> I don't know about that. Boy, these are the best walnuts. Gee, Miss Stanwyck, you sure got a beautiful home here. Well, I'm certainly happy you dropped in. Oh, by the way, where are you boys from? Oh, I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I've only been out here about two months. Scranton, Pennsylvania. And where are you from? I'm from St. Joe, Missouri. <laughs> St. Joe, they love me there. <laughs> well, fellas, you've seen Dabs, or Babs. Uh, uh, come, come, uh, come back to my house. I'll call up some girls, and the three of us will step out. Now, wait a minute, Jack. The boys will have a better time right here. Besides, I've seen those girls you go out with. <laughs> Did you ever get a load of that one that floats around Beverly Hills on a broomstick? <laughs> oh, 
quiet. Oh, I know. Say, Mary, why don't you and I take the boys to the Brown Derby? There's usually a lot of picture people there. Oh, boy, the Brown Derby? Now, we can't go to the Brown Derby. They don't use my chili sauce. Oh, you and your chili sauce. I've tried it, and it's awful. Oh, yeah? Have you ever tried it on lobster? Yes, and the lobster thumbed his feelers at me. <laughs> Well, naturally, a lobster has to be boiled. Boiled or sober. He didn't like it. <laughs> well, then I guess I better tear up that testimonial I signed your name to. <laughs> Say, I've got an idea. Why can't we all go over to Bob Murphy? Now, look, Jack, you're not coming with us. Barbara and I are going to have lunch with the two boys alone. Yes, and later this evening, we'll go dancing at the Macambo. I can't go dancing. No, Nobody asked you to go. go. Oh, they didn't, eh? Well, let me tell you something. These boys came all the way to Beverly Hills to see me, and I'm going along. If you do, you'll pay the check. We'll see about that, sister. <laughs> Let me tell you something else, you Brooklyn bombshell. When it comes... When it comes... <laughs> Let me tell you something else. When it comes... When it comes to showing these cadets a good time, I know the hot spots, too. I didn't get these bags under my eyes for nothing. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what happened when two cadets from Santa Ana came to visit Barbara Stanwyck at her home in Beverly Hills. They came to visit me, Playfield. Gee, these nuts are good. <laughs> You know, friends, when you stop to think of it, man power and woman power are really the result of food power. That's why it's so very important for every man and woman in America to eat nourishing food in this war emergency, especially the vital protective foods, foods such as whole grain cereals. And that's why it's important to see the grape nuts flakes appear regularly at your breakfast table. For delicious toasty brown grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal. This means that grape nuts flakes supply important whole grain food values, including three essential nutritive elements, iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. In fact, grape nuts flakes contain more B1 than you'll find in the whole grain itself. So you see, you get a bowl full of real wartime nourishment when you sit down to a breakfast including malty rich, sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes. So for real breakfast enjoyment, plus real nourishment to start off the day, Treat your family tomorrow morning to Grape Nuts Flakes. That was the last number in the second program of the new grape of the new Grape Nuts Flakes program. <laughs> grape Nuts Flakes. And we'll be with you at the same time next Sunday. I want to thank Barbara Stanley for coming over here to Santa Ana with us. Thanks, Barbara. Oh, you can call me bad. Hmm. Well, you see, folks, and she loves my chili sauce, too. Good night, everybody. The Jack Benny program is written by Bill Meyer and Eddie Beloy. Peter Lind Hayes and Bill Orr, who appeared on our program, are cadets here at Santa Ana. The presentation of the broadcast from the Army Air Base at Santa Ana is for the enjoyment of the officers and personnel and does not constitute an endorsement of our product by the War Department. Have you tried the delicious new hot cereal, rich, hot, brown, grape nut sweet meal?